Hello and welcome to another video from In3D Software. Merry Christmas and Happy New Year. Hope you all had a fantastic break. And in the previous video I did just before we finished for Christmas, I showed you how you can create a Hetic folding and sliding door wardrobe. And in that video, I mentioned that I would do a follow up video showing you how to make the internal draw box configuration for that entire wardrobe so if you've not seen that video go back and watch it i'll put a link to it somewhere wherever i can in the description maybe below and that will show you how we make the overall product which is here let's bring that in so you can see i've got my large six door wardrobe with the uh, drawers in behind if we have a look on the inside here let's just open up the internals so there's my folding and sliding doors from Hetic and you can see that I've got some storage for my hats and shoes up here and then some adjustable shelves some hanging rails and of course I've got my drawers in here as well and um, what I want to do today is just show you how I made that particular type of product because I'm getting a lot of questions asking how I made the drawers where I have three big drawer fronts but in the back you can see I've got six draw boxes um, so what I'll do today is show you how you can make articles and then article zones okay so in the first one in here my first drawing what i'm going to do is just go to the design tab and then go to article designer and i'm going to make yeah i'm going to make a big wardrobe so let's say the height of that was to 500 the width was uh let's say 1500 and the depth was 600 so that's going to be my product and in here if i just come into a realistic view here I can then orbit around and I can specify my wardrobe presets drop in my parts I'll add in a back panel in here and then what I want to do is add in a plinth or a kicker so I'll say that this should have a kicker just like the previous one okay and then what I want to do is divide this up so I'm going to say that I need to divide this into three zones so i'm going to say that i need a fixed shelf one to 400 millimeters so that will now be 400 millimeters to the top and then in that upper section i want to divide that with a partition and i'll use a partition of one to one in here so that's going to divide that up and then in this lower section what i want to do is divide this up into two zones so i'll go down and use again a virtual division and this time what i want to do is say that that virtual division should be 700 millimeters to one that's going to give me two zones and in that lower section i'm going to actually use that as an article zone and in the upper section i'll use these as article zones as well so let's go to the upper section and then in here instead of dividing it with a vertical or horizontal the other way around vertical or horizontal division i'm going to use what we call an article zone and in here i can then drop in a section in here so this is going to bring through a product from my library and squeeze it into that zone it will resize it down so if i've got an existing product perhaps shelves or cupboards with doors or drawers it will then resize it to that zone i'm going to copy that to both sides and just to show you the the, the process i'm going to zoom in here and then click tick so it looks like there's nothing in there but actually it's brought in an extra couple of divisions so if you remember I put my initial one in here but it's brought through these additional ones and if I increase my level of detail in here it's actually going to bring through some small adjustable shelves as well and that's because I brought through this product over here lower shelf which if I drop it in has got two partitions and then the adjustable shelves in between there's no side panels no tops no backs it's just those two partitions and then those three shelves and then it's put it into those zones and stretch those to suit and if i go in here and modify the product and change that 400 to 450 it will then stretch and make that zone and that zone 50 mil bigger and then when i click on the tick it will resize this product to suit so how did I make the draw pack that 
fits into the lower section. So I'll get rid of this product over here, go over to the article designer. And in here, what I want to do is say that the height of this should be, let's say, um, 800 high. The width should be 1200 and the depth should be 600. Okay, so now what I want to do is add in my top and then I'm going to divide this now vertically with a virtual partition and I'll say that I need uh, maybe an infill here of let's say 100 millimeters either side. So one to 100 mil to one. I'll change these to be vertical and I've now got those zones. I'll go to the outer zones and then I'll add in my side panel, which is going to be a side panel in here. And then what I want is for that to just be edged on the leading edge only. And then in here, I want this to also be a side panel in here. So I'll say that this should be a side panel and that's been brought through. OK. I've now got my side panel, but I do want this to be edged all the way around because I want that to look neat. So I'll say that that should be edged in here all the way around. And then what I want to do on this is actually go to the connectors and say that this should connect to the previous part with dowels and to the top with dowels. I'll also do to the bottom as well. So that'll connect into the bottom shelf. I'll go over to this left hand side and I'll do the same. I'll add in that side panel, but I'll say that that should just be on that edge edged only and then I'll add in a side panel in there as well I'll go to the trim and make sure that that runs all the way through to the next part so that should be long and that part in here should be the right hand side just to keep it consistent then I want to go to my trims and I'll say uh, sorry my connections and I'll say to the next part I want dowels to the top and the bottom all dowel together if I just click on the tick, this is what I've got so far. So it doesn't look overly special at this point. The next thing I want to do is modify the product again and go to that middle zone. So if I now come into the middle zone in here, what I can do now is go to my drawers and I'll activate the drawers and say that I want three equally spaced drawer fronts. And it's brought through a two-sided frame system similar to what you'd get in the kitchen. So that's no good. What I actually want is a construction that's set to just draw fronts only so let's have a look at the data here and in this setting what I've done is I've deactivated any backs shelves side panels even the connections for the draw runners and I just have the draw fronts on their own I'll click apply and then what I'm going to do is say that these should be inset drawers because I want them to be inset to the top and I want them to run into the side panels here. And what I'm going to do is actually say that I want no control from the system. I want to manually control the gaps. So in here, I'm going to say that I need a two mil gap left and right so that when I now click tick, this is what I'm going to get. I've got three equally spaced draw fronts and then that's it. Nothing else in here. Next thing to do is to modify the product again. This time I'm going to go to where the drawers are and divide it with a partition. And I'm going to divide that equally into one to one. Now, of course, you could have this into three zones and have three banks of drawers in behind these drawer fronts if you really wanted to, but I'm just going to have two. And what I want to do is just go to the front setting in here, because if I orbit around what I want to make sure is that that, draw, uh, that that partition isn't poking through my drawer. So I'll go to the trim section and say that there's a divider reveal of 20 mil to pull that back. So it's not hitting on my drawers. Then on either side of my drawers, I want to then put in three drawers. So I'll go to my drawer setting and use again the linear division of one to one to one and change these to now be the drawers that have got a CDF code at the back and this is one that i've made from the stock data where i've done the opposite if you think about it i've taken the draw fronts off so these have been deactivated here and instead i've told it to connect to the neighboring element that is to say 
those draw fronts that are running across both sections in here. So this is a preset rule that I've got in the system for next time that I've made, and it's pulled through just the draw box and not the draw front. I can then go to the settings and say that they should be pushed back, remember, because it doesn't know that those draw fronts are there. So I'm going to say go back 18 mil, and I'm going to copy that from one side to the other and then click paste. If I then click tick, here's my drawers now, and it looks like I've got three drawers when actually I've got six in here. Okay, if I go to a wireframe view and from above, you can see in here I've got my draw front connector now connecting those drawers to the draw front. So if I was to pull that handle, both of those drawers would come through in one go. So that's how I would make that particular product. So remember, we need to modify it one more time and then save. So I'll click on the save disk and then I'm going to call this lower draw unit and save and then click tick if i refresh my article list over here on the right hand side you can see it's popped up and that means that i can now come into my main article go to the lower section in here and in that entire zone what i want to do is go to the divisions click on the gray cube as before, go to article zone and then drop that down. And if it's not going to show up in my drop down, I can always click on the red button and choose it from the library. If I click on the tick, here I have that product now stretched to fit into that zone. Okay, next thing I want to do is just move that back because that's where I want my hinges to be. So again, I'll modify that entire zone, go to the front in here, and then do a divider inset of, let's say, 100 millimeters, just to kind of shift all of that back. I can go to the construction, and we can see in here that that's going to shift all of that back 100 mil. Perfect. Now what I need is my doors, so let's add those on. I just want these to be big doors now, so I'll go up to my door setting, and I've got one big door. That's no good. I need some doors with handles in the middle, so I'll do PT instead of PM. There we go. And I've now got my big double door wardrobe, and then when I open this up, I've now got my singular drawers in behind. So that's how you can utilize article zones and sub-articles. And if you really want to get powerful with your article designer um, setup, you can even build in a variable that would swap out those internal configurations. So as you can see, this is great for wardrobes, but it's also great for any sort of tall kitchen products or any sort of furniture that you want internal configurations to swap out very quickly quickly and easily. If you've got any questions or if you'd like to know more about IMOS or IX23, please don't hesitate to get in touch. Once again, I hope you had a fantastic Christmas and a very happy new year. Bye now.